dealing with people who don't understand. When I had MECFS, I spent a long time trying to get people to understand the condition before I realized that actually I wasn't having much success. And I now realize that some people were thinking in, in illogical ways, saying to me and others, you're depressed. Um, I may have been feeling down as a result of having the condition, but who wouldn't be? Depression wasn't the cause of my health issues. I was dragging myself out of bed, juicing, doing yoga when I could, doing everything, changing my diet, and that's not the behaviour of a depressed person. Some people would say it's all in your mind, you just need to do more exercise, you just want to retreat from life. I had been leading a busy, healthy life, playing football, tennis, partying. Why would I want to give that up and lie in bed all day? You need to drink more coffee, Lucozade, put more sugar in your tea. We all get tired. I, and I'm sure you, know what normal tiredness is like. And then people would make comments that were really unhelpful. You know, you are lazy, malingering, feeling sorry for yourself. I wish I could have time to just sit around all day um, and smell the roses. You know, that's not really what I wanted to be doing. So you've probably heard all of that and more. So I'm going to explore three questions and I'll deal with them in turn. The first question, why do people do this? What can we do to understand why people behave like that? What can we do to understand why we try and explain to others what we're going through? And how you can deal with people who don't understand and make unhelpful comments. So let's talk about the first one. Why do people do this? If you've got any thoughts about that, just pop them in the chat. So it might be that one reason is just people feel uncomfortable. And when people feel uncomfortable, they have a tendency to put their mouth into gear without putting their brain into gear. You know, I'm sure we've all had experiences of doing that where we feel a bit uncomfortable and we say something and we think, oh, actually that wasn't very helpful. So just consider that, that, you know, um, someone being ill can make another person feel uncomfortable. It might be that it's reminding them of their own fragility, vulnerability, um, they might not be aware of that consciously, and so the way they might respond is not very helpful. And that brings me on to the second point, that people are just not thinking straight. Third reason, it might be that they just have a lack of understanding. They have, you know, an inability to really put themselves in your shoes. And to be fair, when I... I had a couple of friends who developed ME-CFS before I got the condition and I didn't really understand what they were going through and I probably, with one person in particular who I kind of saw as being a person who was always burning the candle at both ends, was probably being a bit judgmental of her rather than compassionate um, and it's only when I got the condition that I realised how challenging it is and how it's still possible to do things that actually weren't really helping me and I kind of had more empathy for my friend. Now, it might be that some people are just being unkindly, okay? Some people, hopefully a minority, are judgmental and it may be a way of them achieving significance. Uh, there's an entrepreneur, entrepreneur called Frank Kern who says that, you know, that people online, for instance, one way of gaining significance and feeling good about themselves is to go around making unkind comments towards other people, putting other people down. Now, there may be a number of reasons why people do this, okay? I think at core, there is a self-esteem issue, but consider the following. Is this the behaviour of a happy, content person who's having a great life? 
I don't think it is. Personally, my view is that people who are really happy and content don't go round putting other people down. So as I say, I think there's a self-esteem issue here. If you like a copy of my six steps to high self-esteem, then comment the word esteem in the chat below. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below and I will send you the link to that PDF, okay, which will give you some tips around self-esteem and understanding why people uh, may have some self-esteem issues when they're putting other people down. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is why do we try to explain? Okay, there may be a number of reasons for that, including you want them to understand that's completely reasonable. You're trying to make sense of what's happening to you and you may hope that someone will share something helpful. They might shed some light on the condition or how to deal with the condition. And certainly I think that was my motivation. I was talking about it um, because I thought someone might say something helpful. But I did discover that, you know, even close family friends, you know, after a while talking, hearing me talking about how tired I was just wasn't that good for them. And one of, one of my family members said, look, you just keep saying this. I don't think there's anything I can really say to help. I'm not sure how helpful it is for you either to just be saying the same thing every time we chat. And I kind of took the point and I just thought, actually, it isn't helpful. I'd rather spend the time we have on the phone talking about something else. Um, so consider that there are people who want to try and understand and it is reasonable to do what you can to help those people get an understanding of what you're going through so they can consider how to best help you. But there are other people who will not understand or don't want to understand what you're going through. So no matter how much you explain or try and convince them that your issues are real, they're not going to get it. OK, so the question is, how do we deal with people who don't understand and make these kinds of comments? So the first point is, I think we've got to stop trying to get people to understand. OK, I'd suggest that your job is to make sense of the condition, not to get others to. Uh, I remember someone tweeting that comment and I kind of thought it was really insightful. OK. So your job isn't to get other people to understand the condition. Your job is to do your best to make sense of the condition. Second point, if they do genuinely care, then maybe explain once, say, look, I'm going to sit down and talk to you uh, or write something down. I'd appreciate you if you read it. And, you know, say after that, if they make any comments you might just refer them back to the conversation you had or the the notes you gave them if you'd like a copy of my document the five magic words someone with me cfs wants to hear which i've written for people with me cfs chronic fatigue uh, fibromyalgia long covid pots related conditions i've written it for the carers or the people who care for them for them to read to get them to consider how they can best help you okay third point is consider where your line is with people making unhelpful comments using a football analogy i like you to consider at what point do you give them a yellow card let's see if i've got a Okay. At what point do, do you give them a yellow card? All right. And if you're not sure what a yellow card is, a yellow card is a warning. Okay. And once someone's got a yellow card, I'm just looking for something red. Um, you then give them a red card. Okay. You send them off. Okay. And at what point do you say, look, if you're going to carry on making these kind of comments, then 
we are not going to have contact anymore. So consider that. And I share that because, you know, there was a time when I, my boundaries weren't very firm. And actually, you know, there's someone in my family who's really good at setting boundaries. And when someone's out of order, he'll let them know what they th what he thinks. And, you know, he's not averse to sending someone off, all right? Um, so if people make unhelpful comments, it may be vital for your own state of mind to consider the following strategies. Firstly, show and tell them how you feel. I've got a slide for this. So let's share the next slide, okay? So, you know, it might be good for people to see that you're absolutely shocked by what they've just said, all right? Uh, pop that in the chat, you know, how useful do you think it would be for you to literally show with your facial expression that you're absolutely shocked by what they've just said, all right? And I encourage you to practice your shock face. Stand in the mirror and, you know, put your best shot. I'm really shocked by what you've just said. Um, so that when it happens, you can display to them that you're not really okay with what they've just said. So are you practicing your shock face right now? Pop in the chat. Lynn says important to show. I was a fan of the series Suits and the kind of main character Harvey, Harvey Specter. If someone said something that he felt was really order, he'd say one of two things. He'd either say, say that again. Or he'd say, what did you just say? Okay, and that was his way of expressing his unhappiness with what the person said. And I just thought they're two very powerful statements. Okay, so show, tell them how you feel. Now consider that saying, I feel hurt to someone, it might work in some situations if the person cares for you, but if the person doesn't care for you, saying I feel hurt might please them, so it might not be the best approach. So you might say something like, I am shocked by the comment you've just made. I'm shocked that you've made such an uninformed comment. I'm shocked by that comment, carry on making those comments, and we're not gonna be friends anymore. OK, uh, I'm not going to dignify that comment or that daft comment with a response. Dealing with this condition is challenging enough without having to deal with people making daft comments such as that. So they're just a few ideas to get you thinking. I encourage you to just use your own language. You know, some of those statements are a little bit more confrontational, just saying actually I'm shocked by that comment is just you owning your experience. But so use your judgment. You have to decide where you want to pitch your response. OK. Second point is to name the game. OK, recognize that they are playing a game if they're making comments which are clearly unhelpful, clearly unkind. You might say, are you trying to be hurtful? OK. Uh, I've got a friend who, um, if someone said something a bit unkind, he'd, he'd, he'd always say, and he's a big rugby player type, he'd say, I have got feelings, you know. Um, and that was a good way of making the point in quite a light way. All right. But letting, you, letting them know that you can see that they're trying to be hurtful can help you avoid getting caught up in the game that they're playing. And recognise that if we try and justify, then we've got caught up in the game. All right. If they persist with unpleasant behaviour, consider your strategies. One client shared a strategy that her sister use, uses, which I think is brilliant. So when people say to her sister something that's hurtful or unkind, she would simply say to them, be nice. And if they carry on saying unpleasant things or trying to justify what they've just said, she just complete, she'd repeat those two words, be nice. 
and she might say it three times and usually by the third time they'd be quiet. Now that's again that's a little bit more confrontational because you're telling someone what to do but you use your judgment okay my job is just to give people options and you can decide what the best options are and if you have a sort of range of options you can kind of gauge what feels appropriate. Uh, and she, as I say this person said that when her sister said that three times they'd usually back off all right. So third thing is to formulate an explanation. If you do want to explain the condition, develop a short response that is simple to understand, short and sweet, okay? You may want to include some of the following comments. The condition is real, it's not in my mind. Okay, this is not normal tiredness. I know what normal tiredness feels like. I want to be well, I want to be living my life. MECFS is like having constant flu, a hangover, and weights tied to your arms and legs. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but if you'd like to know what it's like, put ankle and wrist weights on your body for a week, and then let's chat. And maybe for good measure, have just a few hours sleep, two or three hours sleep for a week, and see how you feel, and we'll have a conversation. All right. Now, obviously, I'm not advocating people do deprive themselves of sleep, but it just you know, makes the point. Fourth point is around acceptance. I think it's important to accept that it is difficult for some people to understand what you're going through. And it's important to accept that it's possible that nothing you say is going to make a difference to some people. So I think it's really important to let go of that goal of trying to explain and getting others to understand. When I was ill with one person in my family, I had to say to them, look, I'm not going to carry on trying to have a conversation with you about my condition. Uh, if you want to know more, I can give you some resources to read. But from now on, I'm just putting my energy into doing what I think will help me. If you have any ideas or suggestions, I may consider them and whether I explore them further is my decision okay and I felt much more relaxed from that point on because I'd drawn a line in the sand so next point point five is practice self-acceptance there are probably times when you haven't been too bothered about what people think because you're clear enough about what matters to you imagine if someone said to you you've got green hair you wouldn't take much notice you'd think that they're being absurd now imod imagine someone saying a daft comment to you like this condition isn't real and responding in the same way as you would if they said you've got green hair okay but actually they're just talking nonsense they don't know what they're talking about i don't need to explain myself to this person you might just kind of practice your shocked face or your that person's a bit strange and walk away okay consider that as an option that there are times when you might need to just say look we're not having a conversation anymore and walk away i suggest it's better for you to focus on feeling okay about yourself even though you've got this health challenge at the moment and recognize here's the thing if we are in total clarity that this is a real condition then it doesn't really matter what other people think their comments can affect us if we have that chink of self-doubt okay if we recognize they're talking nonsense like you know the green hair scenario then it's easier to just say i'm not even getting engaged with that kind of comment the more we're at peace with the fact that for now you have this condition you are doing your best to deal with it and it's fine if you make mistakes, slip up, push yourself too much. It's part of being human. It's part of the process that we are going to have these dips and it's how we deal with them that's important. The more you'll be able to let go of the views of other people as being important because they're not important. Okay. Point six, you might choose to change the topic. Okay, so if someone makes staff comments, 
and you don't feel like challenging them, you might just ignore their comments. Someone in my family, if someone makes a daft comment, his response would be just to raise an eyebrow. That's all he would do. It's very powerful. And it's quite funny that when uh, their firstborn was really, really young, he was less than a years out, year old, you'd see him raising his eyebrow. And I think that was a, a behaviour he'd learned. So you might ignore their comment. Just do a gesture. Again, practice that. Practice raising your eyebrow, one eyebrow, or both eyebrows, okay? Uh, and change the topic. That's a way of saying, I'm not... And if they come back to it, say, we're not discussing that, okay? Point seven, change your focus, okay? Feeling frustrated, cross, upset by the people's lack of understanding is understandable, but just recognise that this is not about you, it's about them. Consider this question, which I think is a really powerful, powerful question. What age would you put on their behaviour when they're making these unkind comments? Feel free to pop uh, your answer in the chat. What age is that person behaving when they make these kind of comments? And in terms of changing your focus, I really encourage you to just direct all your energy on you and your healing. So I'm going to pause for a minute there. Just let me know what's resonated. Is there anything in particular that I've shared that um, resonates with you? And if you'd like those comments, oh, sorry, if you'd like the points that I've shared, then I'm happy to add it as a blog uh, to my new website. I haven't added any blogs yet, so maybe that will be my incentive to post my first blog on my new page. So I'd be interested to know, let me know in the chat what particularly resonated, what's gonna be one takeaway from you. I wanna just share some wisdom from my group when I asked this question about how you might respond to people who are being unhelpful. One comment was, I usually tell them to beep off but I think I should watch your video because there must be a better way. Okay, so Lynn says, be kind, okay. Another person said, unfortunately we lose a lot of people and I think it's important that people suffering know that it isn't just happening to them as that's what it feels like. There's a lot of grieving involved, but you discover that a lot of these people are not really adding anything and you were doing all the work. Unequal and unbalanced let them go so you have a bit of room for the new i found that pen pal writing is an amazing way of being social without the pressure of being social don't over explain your symptoms to people say it once or twice if they're interested don't waste your time if they're not people that love and care about you will either ask you directly or find out through other ways leave the rest to their own devices and that's from rachel so thanks rachel for that comment Someone else said, I've learned that people will never get it. It's like trying to explain to someone who hasn't had kids what childbirth is like. So I don't go into lengthy explanations anymore. Someone else says, it's not always about us. If they disrespect us, it says more about them and the kind of person they are. And someone else says, said, I cut them out. So Hazel says, I think one of the key things to get our heads around is believing ourselves that we do actually have the condition and not doubt ourselves. If we doubt ourselves and behave like that, then no one else will believe us either. It makes, th if that makes sense, it makes complete sense, Hazel. So it's very nicely put. And, and Hazel says, it's coming to terms with it. Yeah, I think that's really, really important, okay? Um, so thanks for sharing that. Worth having a read of Hazel's comment. Okay, so I think that's all the comments. So th thanks everybody. As I say, if you'd like any, uh, if you'd like that resource, the tips for self-esteem, put the word esteem in the comments and I'll send you the link. If you're watching on Facebook, I'll send you a private message. Um, 
if you'd like me to put these comments in the form of a blog because I have written a blog on this before then let me know and I'll add it to my website so if you've got any questions get in touch uh, I do do I th offer three free half hours every week in that half hour we do a couple of audits so you will have some food for thought about areas to focus on if you'd like one of those audits one of those free half hour sessions either put the word audit in the comments or send me a pm and it's one per person um so and there's no selling i don't sell anything um so uh you are welcome to have one i see your comment hazel i will respond but for now i'll say wishing you great health got you dana send you send you one send you the link as well keep up the great work keep believe in yourself be patient be accepting be compassionate be trusting and wishing you great health thanks for watching bye for now